And then, wow, last few minutes we have here. Tuesday's lesson talks about Jesus' dominion over nature and the power that he used when he was here. Um, and it says, though we don't fully understand the degree which Satan impacts the natural world, uh, Scripture does reveal that his influence is there, such as seen in the story of Job. And Satan even now has been able to bring uh, disasters and things upon the world. So it's also talking about, since sin, uh, Satan has some power over nature. And this is very important to get your mind around. If where do you draw the line and where those lines of Satan's influence and not influence and over nature in the natural world exist? It actually goes down to many things that we have to deal with in real life. Um, Paul in Romans 8 says, All nature groans under the, under the weight of sin. Uh, Ellen White uh, wrote in Second, Second Celestial Messages 288 that Christ never planted seeds of death in the system. Satan planted these seeds. Not one noxious plant was placed in the Lord's great garden, but after Adam and Eve sinned, poisonous herbs sprang up. All tares are sown by the evil one. Every noxious herb is of his sowing, and by his ingenious methods of amalgamation, he has corrupted the earth with his tares. Did Satan alter plant life on planet earth after sin? According to this, he did. How about animals and humans? Has animal life and human life been altered because of sin? In many, many ways. If you look at the human genome, there's all types of genetic mutations in the human genome, cause all kinds of disease, problems, various kinds, illness, sickness, and so forth. Well, um, last weekend I had the opportunity to meet with some representatives of the Adventist lesbian, gay, lesbian, what the lesbian, gay, uh, bisexual, transgendered community, uh, discussing my presentation on homosexuality in the church, which was on the God in Your Church DVD set, third, third uh, set answering difficult Bible questions. Overall, they were very happy and, and supportive of this evidence-based science of brain development and, and uh, genetic issues that have, uh, uh, have a basis in, in human sexuality. So they're very overall supportive of, um, of the, you know, the balanced approach that I took from this. Yeah. However, there was one person who um, argued that um, that some of my comments were, were heard to be critical, made them feel bad, made them feel defective, as if they're defects, um, because I talk about how all genetic defects, all genetic defects are a consequence of sin, whether it's a child born blind or deafness or autism or whatever it might be, and that uh, these genetic defects from design are a consequence of sin, but yet they're not sinful choices to be born this way. Some of them still felt very hurt that I would put it this way, and one person articulated that they don't believe that sexual variation as we see it today is sin, that God built it into Adam and Eve, and had they not sinned, there would still be gay and lesbian individuals in a sin sinless world because it's just part of the spectrum of sexual expression that God designed. This is one, one individual's view. I don't hold to that view, actually. What was your response? Well, I said that, you know, I, I was thinking of this quote that I just read, that God did, not build the, God did not put the seeds of death into the system. God did not build tares into the system. The system was built in a perfect world, but yet because of sin, there are many deviations and defects, and we are born in sin, conceived in iniquity, and that every one of us have various defects of various kinds, whether it is the fact that my, I am graying, or I'm getting wrinkled, or I've got aches and pains in my bones and joints, or that we age and die of old age. You understand, dying of old age is, is not a... God's design. It's a corruption of God's design. He designed they would never die. Okay? And whether it be infertility. I said, well, let's look at infertility. A person who's infertile. God didn't design them infertile. He said, be fruitful and multiply before sin. Infertility is a consequence of sin that affects sexuality. But is a person who's born infertile bad person because of that? Are they corrupted because of that? No, not in character, but they have a biological problem that affects them and affects and many of them may pray long and hard for years that God will physically heal them so they can have children, but often don't get that. So I use the example of the blind, the deaf, Down syndrome, autistic disorders, and gay and lesbian community, uh, chimeras, androgen insensitivity syndromes, and so forth. Now there are individuals in the deaf community that are actively advocating against the technologies that will cure deafness. They do not want the technologies coming forward to cure deafness because the deaf community has its own culture, has its own language, has its own um, actual community. And uh, they see this as an attack and it would destroy the deaf culture and the deaf community to cure deafness. They don't want it cured. There are others who, who argue that autism, high-functioning autistics, argue that autism is not a defect. It's just a variation of normal human, uh, human brain structure. It's just a different type of a brain that works in a different way, and it's not a, 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 a defect in any way. 
Dwarfism is doing the same thing with... Dwarfism doing the same thing. Um, my, my person, I am personally convinced that when Jesus comes that all things are made new, there will not be in heaven one blind person, one deaf person, one mute person, one paralyzed person, one autistic person, one mentally retarded person, one gay or lesbian person. One married person. One married person, you might even say. They won't marry or give in marriage, Jesus said. Okay? We will all be as God originally designed us to be in a perfect world. The issue is about character. And so I'm here to say that you can be gay and lesbian and still have Christ-like character. Because the gay and lesbian is a biological. It's just like you can be blind and deaf and have a Christ-like character. But you can also, as we talked about, do purposeful things that destroy your vision or hearing. You drinking moonshine that's poisoned and you go blind because of it, which is a potential consequence of bad moonshine. And you've blinded yourself. If you persist down that path, you're not going to be in eternal life. Not because you're blind, but because your behavior is destroying your soul that also happens to make you blind. There are individuals who have biological wiring to heterosexual desires. Paul talks about them in Romans, that they exchange their natural, their heterosexual, but they participate in hedonistic orgies and other things that alter their natural desire, and they become inflamed with passions for the same sex. That will destroy them. And Paul's not talking about those individuals who never have those natural desires. So it's about character. You develop a character like Christ that loves God and others more than self, develop a sense of fidelity and loyalty, uh, or do you develop the character of a liar and a cheat? That's the real issue. So back to the question of the biology and the nature. Think this to remember. I'm not here to tell anyone what to think. I respect your ability and your right to come to a different opinion than me. But think through where is that line drawn between God's original design, how things will be, and the infection that sin has caused where all nature groans under the weight of it. Where is that line drawn? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you are a God who is perfectly true, perfectly loyal, perfectly faithful, perfectly a God of love revealed in Jesus Christ. We ask that you will pour your spirit out on our hearts and minds. Help us have wisdom and discernment to, to understand these issues and how to apply them to our lives and, and to trust you with the outcomes of things, Lord, that, that are beyond our ability to, to control or influence. And may you give us wisdom and to treat others who are different than us with the same grace and the same love that you have treated us. We pray in your holy name. Amen.